Hey guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the fastest way of installing MinGW64 on Windows 10. So the first thing you want to do is go to download MinGW. Probably the very first result will be the official page. Go ahead and go to downloads. And from this list, you want to, for Windows 10, you want to locate MinGW64 builds. It will lead you to the SourceForge link. Go ahead and wait for a couple seconds and you will see that the file has finished downloading. Go ahead and just click the next button and then do it again. So on this screen, what you want to do is just type C slash MinGW. You don't have to browse, just type it in directly in this box. Go to next. And so a lot of people will get this error. The file has been downloaded incorrectly. Now, if you don't see this error, just continue with the installation as you usually would, and that should do it. But if you see this error, I'm going to show you how to install MinGW in a slightly different way, but it's going to be exactly the same thing. I want you to find this link in the description of this video and go ahead and click on that. Go to that link and go ahead, scroll down a little, and you will see this file here. So click on that. And we're going to download it in just a few seconds. So now that you have this file, because it's a zip file, we have to extract its contents first. So I'm going to go show it in folder. Now go ahead and right click on the file that was downloaded and click on extract here. It's going to do some work. You'll notice that it will be extracted into MinGW64 folder. Go ahead and let's just check that it's there. Now, right click on the folder and copy and then go to your C drive and go ahead and just paste it here. So basically we're doing exactly the same thing that the installer would have done, but because we had an error, we will simply brute force copy and paste the folder into installation directory. And the whole point is to have the MinGW64 on our C drive. Once we get it there, all we have to do is set up environment variables. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the next step. Now go to your Windows desktop and go to the start button and simply start typing environment variables. You'll see this first search result, so go ahead and click on that. Now on this window, go to environment variables button go to the second part here at the bottom and scroll down to where it says path. Select that and click edit. Now go to the bottom and go to the new button and type in C slash MinGW64, which was the folder where we installed it. Uh, click OK or you might in some cases also create another one and type in MinGW64 bin. So the first one is enough, but just to make sure that we have both of them. Click OK and click OK again and click OK. Now at this point we have successfully installed and configured MinGW64 on our system. So to make sure that it works, go to start button and type CMD and hit enter. So what happened here, we just opened the command line in Windows and to verify that we have MinGW actually installed and it's functional on our system, go ahead and type GCC dash dash version and hit enter. And as you can see, if this text here appears showing you which version of GCC you have, you have successfully installed MinGW on your system. Now to test if we can compile our C program, I open Notepad and I'm going to paste a quick program here. I'm going to go ahead and click save and I'm going to save this file as test.c and I'm going to save it in MinGW64 folder. So now I'm going to go back to my command line. I'm going to navigate to the folder where I had just saved this file, MinGW64, and I'm going to run the GCC compiler on that file. To do that, I type GCC file name, which was test.c, 
and I have to specify the O flag with a dash and some kind of an output file name, for example, output. So I'm going to hit enter. So that's going to compile our C program. And in order to run this, the GCC compiler actually created output.exe file. So in order to run that, we can type that here and hit enter. And as you can see, our program has displayed the message here that we printed out using the printf function in C language.